The Federal Reserve has just made a huge decision for 2024, and you got to ask, is this part of the plan to boost the market before we make a huge decision next year? You see, they seem to be confirming that they're going to cut rates. Could this be for a political reason? It is an election year. Or is this the Fed pivot that we've been waiting for? Inflation has run rampant on our finances, and we experience it whenever we gas up, whether we get gas at Shell, Chevron, Speedway, QT, BP, you know, it's been tough. The same way whenever we go out and buy groceries and coffee. Costco, Kroger's, Walmart, Target. Are we really at a point where we can say that they've overtaken inflation successfully? Doves fly at the Fed as officials signal they are done raising rates, instead raising the number of rate cuts they see next year. Officials left the overnight rate unchanged at five and a quarter to five and a half percent, but they essentially confirmed that's it. The money quote from the statement gets a one word addition in determining the extent of any additional policy firming that may be appropriate to return inflation to 2%. The dot plot, meanwhile, sees 75 basis points of cuts next year, one more move than they saw in September. The dispersion is wide, however, with eight seeing fewer than those three cuts, five seeing more than three. In 2025, they see an additional four rate cuts, one down from September, and two more in 2026. The longer run neutral rate remains at two and a half percent. Their move comes as they significantly lower their median headline inflation forecast this year to 2.8 percent. As the statement notes, inflation has eased over the past year but remains elevated. In the median forecast, it falls further in 2024 to 2.4 percent, 2.1 percent in 2025, and 2 percent finally in 2026. Are any of you surprised? I mean, it's insane what you can do in just two weeks, right? And, and bear with me, guys. I promise you I'm going somewhere with this. You can start to lose weight in two weeks. You can try studying a new skill in two weeks. You can even change your mind when it comes to rate hikes in two weeks. Now, before I even show you this footage, I want to ask, do any of you feel as if this quote unquote pivot is being done for political reasons? Just comment a quick yes or no down below for that one. While you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button for the video. I want to make sure we get this message out to more free thinkers and consider being a part of this amazing community community by subscribing to the channel and turning on all notifications. Appreciate that, guys. So back to what I was saying about two weeks, right? So here's Jerome Powell at the start of December. The FOMC is strongly committed to bringing inflation down to 2% over time and to keeping policy restrictive until we are confident that inflation is on a path to that objective. It would be, it would be premature to conclude with confidence that we have achieved a sufficiently restrictive stance or to speculate on po when policy might ease. We are prepared to tighten policy further if it becomes appropriate to do so. So we're making decisions meeting by meeting based on the totality of the incoming data and their implications for the outlook for economic activity and inflation, as well as the balance of risks. You see the messaging here, right? That they're either going to raise rates or keep them at this level for longer, right? Here's what Jerome Powell had to say less than two weeks later. No one is declaring victory. That would be premature. And we can't be guaranteed of this progress. So we're, we're moving carefully in making that assessment of whether we need to do more or not. Um, and uh, that, that's really the question that we're on. But of course, this, the, the other question, the question of when will it become, become appropriate to begin dialing back the amount of policy restraint in place, that, that begins to come into view. What now? <laughs> What's coming into view, Mr. Powell? You see what I'm saying here, right? And sure, we can be optimistic about the economy. There's nothing wrong with hope, right? But this is really strange. I mean, do any of you feel as if we're catching up to inflation at this rate? Put down one in the comments if you think we are. And if you don't, just go ahead and put a number two. <laughs> he said number two. Now, I don't have a crystal ball to tell me that this is all a ruse, okay? This is a gut feeling. And in no way is this referring to the number two that I mentioned just a minute ago. Nor is this financial advice. You're free to do whatever you want with your investments, but I guess you're already have an idea as to what's going to be around the corner because look at this chart now i'm not going to go through each one but you know just to set the context here the cpi is supposedly only at 3.1 percent in november compared to 3.2 percent in october so that's good news right well when you see the charts like these that continue to show everything's still going up the news doesn't sound as good i mean if inflation is slowing down as they say then it means that prices are technically still going up just not at the same pace as before right and i mean juices and drinks they're still up what 18 
18.6%, baby food and formulas up 7.6%, right? And you've got car insurance at 19.2%, repairs at 12.7%. I mean, like, how is this a sign that they can actually cut rates? Is it coming into view now? Here's what came to my view just recently. A write-up that says inflation is down, consumers are optimistic again, and the economy is most probably going to help none other than President Biden in 2024. Oh, the timing. So they're telling us that a survey shows that consumers are feeling better about the inflation now compared to April 2021, meaning that, I don't know, Bidenomics is working, I guess? That should be great news for the holidays. I mean, we're so close to jumping into 2024 and like that should signal sales for toys and, you know, all sorts of Christmassy stuff like that should just skyrocket, right? It's only logical that consumers who are feeling better would have the cash, the ability to buy toys for the holiday season, right? Well, if that was the case, then why the heck is Hasbro laying off 1,100 of its employees? That's 20% of their workforce, folks, and it's right within the holidays. The reason for the layoffs? Lackluster toy sales. One mover that we're watching today, Hasbro. The toy maker slashed nearly 20% of its workforce, amounting to 1,100 employees as the holiday shopping period highlights a weaker market for toy sales. In a memo obtained by Yahoo Finance, Hasbro CEO told employees while we see workforce reductions as a last resort, given the state of our business, it's a lever we must pull to keep Hasbro healthy. We've been keeping tabs on Hasbro shares this morning and continuing to ultimately really weigh what some of these cuts that have come forward towards the end of the year, whether they be for some of the restructuring ahead of what we've discussed with economists, any fears that CEOs may have of a recession or just more kind of pertinent to their industry, what type of pullback they're seeing in spending in toys is one of those categories where for Hasbro, it's been a, a tale of kind of two different cities versus Mattel in the year that Mattel has had with all of the fanfare around Barbie, whether that be content, whether that be licensing, whether that be the toys and figurines that people are buying into. All of that considered, Hasbro has talked about a pipeline that it has going forward, especially thinking about the Wizards category, but at the same time, uh, looking across the workforce and ultimately having to make this decision prior to some of those other projects, both on the um, production and licensing side coming to fruition. Yeah, you mentioned the uh, discrepancy here, the difference we're seeing in terms of the performance of Hasbro versus Mattel. Yes, they are both lower here this morning ahead of the open, but we can take a look at those year-to-date performances. That's where you're going to see a difference. Mattel shares still in the green for the year, up just about 6%, but you're comparing that to a 20% decline in Hasbro stocks. Folks, Hasbro has been making some amazing games, toys. This includes Dungeons & Dragons, Play-Doh, and even Monopoly. You know that board game where you can go absolutely broke and still ask the bank for more money? The expectation is that it's not going to get any better for 2024. Now, there are other reasons related to that, but we're not going to get into that right now. Let's just say it rhymes with the word, hmm, they went joke, okay? Now, I'm sure you guys got that one, but what do you guys think about all this? Do you think that investors and consumers are being manipulated in some sense with the message from the Fed? Even though it's easy to see that consumers are facing a rough battle, even with the expected spending for the end of the year. But as I always do, I like leaving the last word to you guys. So do please share your thoughts in the comment section down below about everything that we talked about today. And before I go, I want to thank you guys for hanging out. Thanks for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.